All right, guys, before we get into today's video, I want to apologize real quick. I bought a new GoPro and basically I unboxed it and set it down next to my original and I was in a mad rush and I took off out of here and grabbed the new one and totally spaced out changing the settings to landscape in 4K and I shot a bunch of footage with it including the 28 Model A video which if you guys watched that one you probably noticed it was shot square. It was a, a square field of view in the player where right now we're going all the way to the outsides of your view. Um, unfortunately today's video is also going to be shot square. My bad, it was a stupid mistake. That being said, let's get into it and watch some 35 Dodge Rat Rod Repair. Guys, welcome back to Rodder's Garage. Today, we're gonna be working on this 1935 Dodge Rat Rod sedan that my buddy Eric picked up. Basically, I think he had it out, he drove it a couple times around town at lower speeds and then took it down the highway from what I understand, probably had it going about 70 and when he pulled back into town, he had a severe mechanical failure. Uh, that potentially could have cost him his life or killed somebody else on the road. Obviously when you go pick one of these things up online that someone has built or already put together, you want to have someone come with you or have a good strong understanding of the mechanical aspects of a vehicle in general really. Um, let's pop the hood here and I'll show you the catastrophic failure. That potentially could have killed someone. So right off the bat, Let's take a look at this steering. We got a heim joint here welded right to the edge of this open top square tube, which is the frame. Frame is two by four, well, 3 16 wall tube, butt welded together here, butt welded together here on the bottom with absolutely no gussets or plating on the outside. So that's a big, big concern in my book. I would like that plated and gusseted, probably both actually. So we're gonna take care of that. This is, that's just not right. We're gonna get that solved too, put some nuts on it, build a bracket, make that right. But uh, take a look at this. Take a look at that puny little universal joint in the steering right here. It almost looks like a half inch swivel socket or something. I've, I've never seen an actual steering joint that small. I don't, I don't think they would make them like that. I mean, that's pretty spooky actually. Um, up here, we got another Heim joint. That one's just zip tied off to this what is this? Oh, spark plug wire. That's cool. As you can see there on that universal, there is a extra long roll pin sticking through there from top to bottom. And that is because after he got done going 70 miles an hour down the road and pulled back into town, he got to a stoplight and one of these tiny little pins dropped right out of the universal joint and the steering fell off his firewall. And there he sat at a stoplight with no steering after going 70 miles an hour in this contraption. So aside from the fact that the steering needs to be completely redone and salved up so it doesn't uh, fall apart again and that the frame is definitely not structurally strong enough up here at the front, that definitely needs some plating and gussets, there's some other problems to address. First of all, they cut the springs down. You can see the upper control arm is way up in the air right now. That is definitely gonna have to be addressed and I'm assuming, well I'm not assuming, I don't know what this kit is actually for, but it's definitely not installed right. Currently, our upper control arm is angled up. It is way up in the air because they cut the spring so low. Also because they cut the spring so low, there is no suspension right now, zero. Actually it looks, I mean that spring's really not loaded at all. The shocks are actually holding the car up right now. They are completely bottomed out and there's pretty much nothing there for suspension on the front of this thing. So basically what that means is we're gonna have to cut the entire front suspension out of it and uh, redesign that. One other thing I saw right away when he pulled it in, with that upper control arm being all the way up like that right now, technically the tire should be leaning in. Right now, even with the control arm up like it is, that tire, I don't know if you guys can see, is still actually leaning outward, which means the hats, the upper spring mounts here are way too far outboard. We're already maxed out completely in our adjustment slots for the upper control arm here. This whole hat needs to go in probably, probably at this point to where this bolt would be on the outside of this hole so we can get the thing adjusted and be able to even align it in the first place. So the reality is here, he, uh, he got pretty lucky not having something uh, more catastrophic happen with this thing. Losing complete control of your steering is a bad deal any day of the week, especially uh, if you're going 70 miles an hour. Thank God it happened at a stop sign. So let's get it up in the air and check the rear end out. 
That looks to be done really well. Uh, it's Corvette rear suspension in here. It seems to be pretty nice, but we'll get it up and inspect that too. But that's the plan. Go through all this stuff, make it safe peace of mind for the next time he takes it out and tries to drive it. Transmission lines disconnected, radiator hoses disconnected, cooling fan disconnected, and basically they welded this grill shell right to the chassis. So I'm going to make two more cuts. Our grill shell's off, and then we're going to start taking a look at the suspension and see what we can do to straighten some of that stuff out. I do have another car in the front room with the same exact suspension installed in it that was installed correctly. So we can go up there and take a look at that one and take some measurements from certain key points like the lower control arm bolt to not necessarily the upper control arm, but the grooves that the upper control arm sits in. Kind of take some measurements of height and distance apart and maybe we can get this thing put back on a little nicer than it is. So here we go with the grill show. I wouldn't suggest those. If you go on this end over here, this is actually a real U-joint. Get these out of Speedway or anywhere else, I guess, that sells a race car or hot rod components. These ones here are built tough and are actually more like a actual car U-joint. Got needle bearings and caps. They're not greasable, but you can pop the screws on the end and pop the caps and clean them out or grease them. I've done that before, added a little grease after some run time when they dry up a little, but uh, yeah, we're gonna replace all of this nonsense here and that one with the real deal. So upon further inspection of spring, that's a torch mark. God knows how much they actually cut off them. I know they're a lot longer than this normally. Both of them just aggressively chopped off with a torch. We'll have to find new springs. All right guys, with a quick look up here, I have a, have a diagram of a different universal Mustang 2 kit. I'm looking down here at this bolt hole. That's the center bolt hole, like I said, in the lower control arm. They're showing three and seven eighths up, in this case, to the bottom of their frame rail. I'm assuming the bottom control arm is level at this point, so three and seven eighths up to the bottom of their frame rail, which looks like two by three. And that's coming out over here to the end, and when it comes to the end of the center line of the spindle, it's saying that it'll be a quarter inch lower than the spindle center line. So, it's actually uh, four and an eighth from this bolt hole to the center of the spindle. We can verify that, but that should just be the way it is. Four and an eighth with the bottom control arm level from here straight out to the spindle should be four and an eighth. And then it's an additional five and a quarter, and that's to the top of the upper hat. So basically nine and an eighth we should be from this hole to the top of that plate on the chassis. Let's go measure that real quick. All right, so I got my tape measure down here roughly at the center line of that lower bolt hole, and I come up here to the top I am nowhere near nine and a quarter. I am uh, seven and three eighths, which leaves us, what, an inch and seven eighths short? That would explain a lot here. That would explain why it looks so goofy. So, for some reason or another, this cradle is too high. Boy, I don't know, that's just a really weird deal why this would be installed like that. But we're going to straighten it out. If it was down about two inches lower, it would be uh, right on the money with those other specs. Let's run up in the front room and check that other Mustang setup and see where that is, what the distance is from that hole to the top of the mounting hat. What are we on this unit, which is roughly the same thing. And now one thing I want to point out on here too is if you look at this top hat, 
or the spring perch, basically, spring up or spring hat, whatever. Uh, basically, this angle is running directly into the cross member, which is kind of odd because on the other one, this thing is about an inch and a half out further, which we know they're out too far anyway already. But let's just take a peek here and see if I can't get a rough measurement here. All right, roughly there. Yeah, nine and a quarter. We take a look at these control arms here. Um, they're a lot further apart height-wise than on that rat rod, which, you know, it looks right. I mean, you, you look at enough of them in your life, you know that they should somewhat at least look like this or be level or just a little bit different. It's not like the other car where the upper was aiming straight up in the air uh, with the spring in it. The only time you'd ever really see that is if you had a bag and all the air was out with the upper pointing straight up. But uh, this looks to be done right. Got our nine and a quarter height. I mean, I would assume that's correct. However, after staring at this car for the first time so far, um, I'll probably be cutting a bunch of stuff off of here too and redoing it. If you guys can see, that spring, both springs are just twisted forward severely. It, it, the thing walks up about, I'd say a good three quarters of an inch. Um, and also if we look down in there at the spindles, it's uh, got a serious amount of positive caster on it. They are leaning forward about two to three degrees, probably dial some into it, but they got the upper control arms maxed all the way out on both sides, which ironically is totally the opposite of the car in the shop. And I'm looking here and look at that, the tire, I don't know if you guys can see that the tire is leaning in on this one, severely. And our adjustment is all the way maxed out already on the top head on here. So uh, basically this one's installed wrong too. This one I think I can probably get away with just cutting the top hats off and uh, relocating them and going out with them in this case and back. I don't know. I don't know what the story is. So, up in here, I got all the remnants of that old cross member ground off, filled all the uh, porosity in from the plasma cutter and ground this off. And as you can see, I got my marks laid out here. I'm actually gonna drop that down. This cross member was originally up this high, um, right where this mark is, if you guys can see that. I'm dropping it two inches. Two inches actually gets us right where it should be based on the book distance from this hole to the top of this bracket. Well, after some severe measuring, I finally got my cradle located where I want it up here in the front. There is not a single thing on this whole car that is straight. One rail is pointed down, this side is angled down, this side's angled up. And we actually did a wheelbase check. My buddy just stopped by. We did a check from this wheel forward and that wheel forward. And actually, uh, the wheelbase is off three quarters of an inch on one side. So absolutely nothing here is square. Obviously, it was kind of thrown together. You can tell from the build style. But uh, I got this the best I can possibly get it. We got our nine and a quarter from the center of our lower control arm hole to the top of the hats. That's the main thing. So when the new springs come in, they're going to fit right. Dropped ourselves two inches. We're gonna catch the rail by about seven eighths on both sides. I'm gonna weld this up right now and then go ahead and make some gusseting out here. Uh, basically to the outside of the rail down in. We might cap this first, gusset that all out, make it good and strong. And then after that, we can go ahead and cut the top hats off and get those sent back, located and centered out, centered out on these. And probably also bring them in that well, probably half the distance of this hole. That's what I was thinking before. So we are inch and a half. We'll probably go in three quarter. 
and that should give us all the room in the world for adjustment. When I put the top hats back on, I'll just tack them in place and then we'll do a dry fit on all the suspension components, set it on the ground, get the vehicle weight on it with the new springs, and make sure we are somewhere in the center there with the tires standing vertical so it can be aligned in the future. All right, guys, well, it's been a little bit, and I ended up going back to the plasma table once more and cutting some gussets. I got all my ends capped, my outsides welded on, all gusseted out to the outside of the rail. Biggest point is that it's structurally sound now. I mean, we're wrapped all the way up to here. We got our line carrying out that extra inch and three quarter, and down here, so there is zero chance at this point that those rails can wobble or tip. Plus, we, uh, we got that thing burned in there a lot better than it originally was. I mean, before, when you think about it, whatever two inches below the rail so somewhere like right here basically uh, from this point on the cradle up it was just one pass a weld around this thing to the frame rail and now we got all this extra support so I'd say we're good to go I got some brand new springs here that got delivered today these are the new ones obviously and uh, this is what they had cut cut presumably probably the same springs down to to probably try to achieve the stance or whatever the heck they had going on here in the first place so We'll get them on, get those in, see roughly where we're at, and make sure we have enough adjustment before we burn those top ones on completely. All right guys, I'm gonna give this a quick tack into place. Line it up on my marks where it needs to be. Put a couple on there and see what things look like. I guess that's why they cut them down before. What do these look like? The only reason we're using the short spring right now is because I only have two small tacks on this upper. We'll use the other short spring as a spacer on my jack. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's a fresh day for me down here. I got this thing wrapped up to the point where it's at last Friday. Got everything painted up on the front rails and everything assembled the rest of the way. The steering rack is on. Everything is tightened up properly. Cotter keys and everything. Ball joints, tie rod ends. Calipers are back on. And also relocated both of the brake line brackets down here before they were up here. And I can't imagine that they weren't actually hitting the tire before. But they work really nice like this now full turn to turn which I'm not going to do right now with one hand because the steering's hooked up on both sides but that all looks really nice now and you can tell the big difference if you go back and look at how it was when we first looked at it uh, we are way lower with that cradle and everything actually looks correct now so we'll get it back on the ground and see what it really looks like here in a couple of minutes but for the time being I just cut myself some gussets here and I'm going to go ahead and get those welded in on top of the frame rail on both sides. Well, I got my diamond-shaped eighth-inch plates welded on the seams on the side of the rail in traditional rat rod style, just doing the diamond exposed with with the weld exposed as well, not gonna grind or buff anything, just give it a wire wheel and hit it with some flat black. 
Up here I got one of these stars left that they had on the rail for, I guess, decoration or for whatever reason. Um, I took two off already. There was one here, one here, nothing matched side to side. They were just placed on and welded. I'm going to air chisel these two off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take four of them instead of the, all six of them. And uh, I'm just going to weld one right in the middle of each of these diamond shaped plates. Uh, just because they were on there and maybe he'd like them back on there. And then we'll cap the top of these tubes real quick because I just think it'll look a little bit better if these were sealed off. <laughs> Right, guys well I wrapped up my radiator last night and got everything mounted in the grill shell and as you can see down here on the bottom I made a little bit of a modification to it my lower radiator hose came out directly on the steering rack over here so that wasn't gonna work now originally in the beginning of the video I don't know if you guys caught it but the way this was set up before this up this cradle here for the suspension was up two inches higher and they actually had the lower radiator hose running under the cross member which I don't like that at all. I mean, if you bottom out or hit anything, you're gonna rip the entire radiator hose off. The transmission lines were also under it. I'm gonna to try to get those over the top this time just to protect everything a little bit better. So before we put that on to make life easier, I'm gonna do the steering right away. All right, guys, so I got my new knuckles here in place. Down in here, gonna sit right next to the motor mount. And up back here, we're just gonna clear this back spark plug wire, just leave enough room to get the plug in and out. And at that point, my rear U joint should be somewhere in this vicinity. So on the inside, as you can see up here on the firewall, there is no bearing holding the column up there. That's no good. So we're going to repair that. I think what I'm going to end up doing is just making a whole tube, probably exhaust tube steering column. All right guys, so I got a quick and crude rat rod steering column welded up here. Basically just got a, I gotta watch it, I just welded that end. Got a bearing welded in each end, not welded, just press fit right now. And then I got a couple of rings I cut on the plasma table here, like a slip ring that's gonna slide over the shaft. I'll be able to weld that off to the steering shaft and that'll keep the bearings from falling out of the column and the shaft from being able to slide up and down in the column. So I'm just gonna throw the steering wheel on here really quick sit in the seat and see basically if I want to drive this further into the column or where I need to be. I'll get that fit and then I can take it out, finish welding this up, and basically we'll just slide it in the firewall, weld it to the firewall, weld it back off to the dash, just like they had it, I guess. It's, it's a lot better than what they had and it would be nice to make it removable, but for this program, I think we'll just weld it into place. I like it. I'm gonna go get my parts tacked on the column. and we should be good to go. All right, well that's a lot better than what it was before. Got everything welded up, my retaining washers on the end of the column. We got our drop here, gotta weld that up yet, and obviously I said before I'm gonna weld it to the firewall, but we are tacked in place and it's holding. It feels a lot better. I lifted it up probably 10 inches from where it was before so it's looking pretty good I threw my grill shell back on cut some radiator hoses for my upper and lower here they worked out pretty good 
especially that adapter adapter thing I made there on the radiator that really worked out nice on that side got to put some hose clamps on them yet but I did finish up the steering got my bracket all welded in for my heim joint heim joint is tightened down down there in the dark like usual uh, everything's painted up welded bolted on with Loctite on the jam nut here down on the down on the steering and I even went inside and spray painted the, of course that door is stuck shut again, but spray painted the column, got everything welded up and done. Well guys, we're back to where we started at the beginning of the video with the thing off the hoist and in this spot. But it definitely looks a lot better, I'll tell you that much. The suspension looks really happy in the front end. I'm glad I went ahead and added that extra material on the bottom of the grill shell. It still is pretty low to the ground, hopefully it's going to be okay. I know for a fact that it's at least inch and a half, two inches higher than it was before though, so that's definitely a bonus. Well, as you can plainly see, the 35 is back up on the hoist now, and the reason that is is because where we left off, where I was about to start doing some wiring under the hood and getting this thing out of here, uh, Eric came over and we decided to do some extra work on the car. Winter is pretty much here, he wasn't going to be driving it anyway, so we decided we're going to put some gauges in this thing, glass. If you notice up top there's a white roof on it, I got to install some snaps and snap that vinyl top down on it. He had that made for a little protection from the elements. We're also going to go ahead and install some bear claw latches in it because obviously as you guys saw the driver's door does not open properly, it's jammed shut. We're probably going to have to do something with the pillar in there to make that uh, not a problem in the future and also especially with suicide doors on the back bear claw latches are gonna be the only way to go really so we don't have a, an event where the original door latch opens and the door rips off the car so we're gonna come back in a part two on this 35 Dodge and get that little stuff resolved, get the gauges in and pretty much finish it out so it's ready to go for next year because the season's pretty much over anyway. Also, I guess I never really showed you guys the rear suspension, but there's a couple of things back here we're probably going to address. It's actually installed fairly nice, but some things like the shocks, this one's not bad, but up here in the dark, um, it's just angle iron, which is, I guess that's fine, it'd be nice to brace that a little, but on this side, as you can see, they had the angle iron a little further back, and we are rubbing on the drive shaft with the shock, and the shock's got a big dinger in it, so we might end up doing a little bit of stuff on this rear suspension, otherwise, we're pretty much wrapped up with it. So, with that being said, we're going to come back in a part two, get everything else done on the car, and take it for a quick drive, and get it back home. So. Thanks for watching guys, appreciate it. Till next time.